What is up, boys and girls? How you guys all doing on this beautiful day today? We're out in the teal with it again. I got my buddies Paul and Mike with me. And we're gonna do a little striper fishing this evening. Um, it's probably 4.35 right now or something like that. It's still blazing hot um, sun down on us. And we're just parked up on the water, soaking some bait and washing some lures. But uh, we don't really expect to catch much until it kind of cools off and the sun goes down. We just, you know, had the time, so we drove the boat out. We're gonna get the thing cleaned up and post up here for a little bit and uh, keep hucking some lines. And I think as soon as that sun right there goes over those mountains, which is not very far away, um, the fish bite will pick up quite a bit. So don't go nowhere. You're watching the bite. <clears throat> Paul's got the biggest fish of the day right here. If we don't catch a fish tonight, Paul's gonna eat that entire wad of seaweed. Posted up against this little cliff. You can see this little rocky cliff right there. Some trees. And it drops straight down into about 30 feet right off of that little cliff. We're throwing some lures through it, soaking some bait down in there. We'll give them a second, we'll see what happens. Yeehaw. The sun finally went down on us and we just dropped anchor and posted up and we're bottom bouncing some baits and throwing some plugs. We got some anchovies soaking behind the boat and I'm um, just kind of hanging out in the cabin, uh, catching a little bit of blue light from these, these LEDs. I got some blue LEDs hanging, which is why there's like this teal tint to me in the teal with it. The teal with it's got a teal tint sometimes. So we're just gonna post up, eat some snacks and uh, kind of kill some time as the tide rips out. And uh, hopefully we'll get into some fish after a bit and uh, we will keep you guys updated. Well, you guys, finally hooked up. Chilling here in the dark. Let me get my headlamp on so we can see this fish as it comes up. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to spotlight it. You got, you have a headlamp on, Paul? No, I don't. Here, why don't you take this headlamp so that you can net this fish. All right, you guys. Gonna hop up in the seat right here. Does that headlamp do anything? See him? Oh, oh he's gone for a run. All right, all right. Yeah, that's a fish in the net, guys. Just a little buck. Perfect eating fish, actually. Look at that right there, guys. Nice little striper, probably five or six pounds. Just uh, soaking an anchovy off the back of the boat. Super stoked on that. It's been a real good season for striper. There's a bunch in the river. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this one. He's a perfect eating size fish. And uh, we'll try to get into some more. Maybe we can get into a real monster. I know there's some big fish out here, but. Yee good little striper right there. Stoked. So guys, while we're sitting here and waiting to get a bite, I'll show you what we're running. Pretty classic tried and true setup. It's actually the way that I've caught in all of my stripers other than one small one that I caught on a plug one time. But um, all my fish have been bottom fish uh, bait bouncing. And what I do is I got a weight slide down to a three ounce disc to a little snap swivel. I have 25 pound fluorocarbon and I'm running this about two to um, three and a half feet, something like that. Three and a half, four feet's a longer leader. I would run that if I was doing live bait down to anywhere from a one to a four aught hook. I was rocking four aughts the other day. My friend was rocking um, two aughts. We both caught fish. So got a little piece of anchovy, but sardine or herring, whatever, pretty much the same. And um, I tied an egg loop onto this hook, like if you were salmon fishing. 
and I'm just going to hook it right down the center right here, like through the belly piece, just like that. And then I'm going to wrap that egg loop around and tighten it up. And the reason that I did it like this is because um, I actually already had um, a couple of lines rigged up with egg loops. And the other night I saw Steve messing around with it. So I tried it and it's looping around and it's holding my bait fine. And this way I don't have to go dig around in my box and find my magic thread. But a real classic way to do this is to just lay that hook in the same way that um, I did the first time and then just wrap a couple of strips of magic thread around the base of it right here or even just running up the body. The magic thread isn't going to deter the fish from biting it at all. And that right there is a pretty perfectly set piece of anchovy to just bounce out there on the bottom. I got about a two foot liter of 25 pound fluorocarbon to that little swivel to 50 pound braid on my main line. And I have a weight slide with three ounces in disc form. You can run triangle or cannonball or anything else. I kind of like the disc because I think it drags. It's what I use for surf casting. And so I have them around. That right there, put it out on the bottom, let it soak any um, salt water, coastal estuary waters, pretty much from Portland, Oregon, all the way down to around San Diego you can find your striped bass. Some rivers are gonna produce a whole lot more fish for you. California is known for its striped bass. There's a lot of striped bass down there. Oregon has very few striped bass. We've just got a couple of rivers, and if you're up here in Oregon and you're really looking for them, you're gonna to have to do your research to be able to get into fish. Um, I don't know if there's any striped bass going as far north as Washington or beyond. I think that um, they need warmer water, and um, that's why it's mostly Southern Oregon and um, down into California and you know, they have them on the East Coast. It's huge in New Jersey places like that It's big striped bass fisheries, but that right there is gonna get you into a fish. Let's try to do that right now yeah. Well guys, we're just hanging out waiting for this tide to change and really start pumping in on us We think once the current starts moving again, the fish might get a little bit more active. It is just dead silent quiet out here um, every now and then we hear some fish break in they're splashing all around us but like not a whole lot of top water activity and the um, water is just still and calm and quiet there's no wind there's like no birds there's like nothing it's pretty much just quiet pitch blackness all around us so but we did manage to stick that one uh, real good eaten size striper earlier um, just a few days back, maybe a week back now, we posted up over here on the side of the road, right on the side of the river, and did a little fishing. Um, Mike and Paul came down and joined me, and our buddy Steve came and pulled up and posted up next to us there. Steve's a uh, real striper killer, and he managed to stick a nice, like, 15-pound fish the other night, and I got a nice little 9-pound fish. Uh, check those out real quick while we sit here and wait for this tide to turn around and maybe get into a couple more tonight, so... There you go, Steve's on to something. Oh yeah, striper buddy. Just woke up. Yeah, he just woke up. That's a nice one, huh? Yeah. That's a nice one, man. How's that feel, bud? Look Ooh, at that fish. Oh, that's a giant. Oh my God, that's a big fish, dude. That is a big one. Hold on, yeah. He's here, not here, let him, let him get in again. He's not done. He'll go belly up. Like eight, eight, nine, ten. Oh, Whoa. that's a that's a tank. Dude. That's a good one. Oh no! Look at this fish coming in. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. Oh yeah, that's a root. Hell yeah, bud. How's that feel? Whoa, that felt good. That's a better fish right there. Look at that fish. Holy smokes. I didn't even know. I couldn't hear my bell. I, dude, I think look your bell at, fell at, off. That's what that, they do that. That's that why. monster fish right there, you guys. Yeah, that's crazy. You guys have seen uh, Steve smash some fish on the channel before, but um, I don't think that you guys have got to witness him catching any monsters. This guy is a striper slayer. And uh, look at that fish right there. Here, I'm gonna let him show it off. I'm always holding other people's fish. That's nuts. It's all good. It's a brute. Nestor just took off too. That's so funny. Nestor literally left like two minutes ago. He was, he was, he was here, he drove away, and some fish started splashing right underneath us. We were gonna try to catch a little sculpin or something to use for live bait. I heard the bell going off. I was like, Steve, that's your rod. He's like, are you sure? 
He's like, yeah, man, I think that's your rod. Look at that fish. That's a tank. That's gotta be a solid. It's gotta be a solid 15. Yeah. Could no, be a 20, probably, that could I be a 20, 20 pound fish, yeah. He's near 20. The 15 yeah, yeah. I caught was probably a little. Oh, it'll pop out right here. Now. Just one second. Probably go ahead and harvest this one. Don't have yeah, the ice think, though, it kind of sucks. I think that's a good harvesting fish. Yeah. Cool. You know what that means is that there's stripers out and they're yeah. eating. It's a big boy too. Let's get yeah, yeah it's a big boy too. Let's get into another one. On? Here, that's what I got fish. I got the other rod. That's a nice fish, Asher. I told you I watched your rod twist. That's a good one. Hell yeah, you guys, I'm onto a fish. Yee hoo! I come down I was right down here. One. I can see it right now. That's a good fish. See it right down there, too? You see it there, Paul? It's all the way down below. I would run down for it, but I was going to stay high so I could chase it. Let me know if you need me to move. Uh, bring it up a little. Nice, right. Asher. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Watch the weight. Don't let the weight get tangled in the net. Yeah. Whew. That was, you almost, I seen him zip see right, him right over there? the line. Yeah, onto a good fish, you guys. That's a nice fish. I'm gonna come down this way a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm bringing him up to you right now. Yeah! All right. First time fishing for like anything more than a trout in a while, and I was really hoping to get into a good fish. And this is a beast of a striper. Check this fish out. It came and picked it up. It's not quite the monster fish that Steve caught, but that's a good, beautiful, maybe nine pound fish right there. I'm super stoked on that. It's a perfect eating fish. And I'm definitely gonna harvest this fish right here. Look at that. Good stuff, man. Stoked. The bite is back, guys. Couple of beautiful stripers. Fun little evening. That's a nice, long, skinny fish. I don't know exactly what that one weighed, but um, probably in that six to nine range. It's a skinny fish, so I don't think it weighed too much. I already cleaned it up, so we won't be able to put it on a scale. But this big boy right here that Steve caught, uh, we left the belly in it. He's gonna take it home, throw it on a scale. We'll let you know what that thing weighed. We're guessing somewhere in between 15 and 20. I'm thinking maybe 17 pounds, something like that. Um, that's a big, beautiful fish right there though. We know it's 32 inches. Pretty badass, right you guys? That's a nice fish that Steve caught. Um, I'm real stoked with that little eight, nine pound fish or whatever. But that fish that Steve caught, like I thought for sure was gonna be like a solid 20 pound fish. Um, real chunky and girthy for only being a 15. It looked like it was gonna be a lot bigger than that. But he said it topped off 15 exactly on the scale. Um, we've caught a couple other 15s that were like smaller fish, but I guess not, you know. Um, Anyways, we're going to keep soaking baits, keep throwing some lures and lines, and uh, try to get into these fish. You're watching the bite. Yee!